Legend has it that all who gaze the eyes of the creature, known as Medusa, would immediately be turned into stone. But what if I told you that there was one creature not even Medusa would want to look at? Well, that creature is known as SCP-173, or simply, the Sculpture. The subject belongs to the Yuka class, with its origins still very much unknown. It was captured and moved to Site-19 in the year 1993, and the special containment protocol for SCP-173 involves locking up the creature in a container at all times. The container should have a dimension of 20 by 10 meters in both length and height, with a breadth of 6 meters, and it must be an empty container and other to give the subject freedom of movement. If at all, any SCP personnel must go into the cell of SCP-173. He must go in with at least two other SCP personnel, and the door must automatically be locked the moment they enter the container to prevent the events of April 4th, 2005, which led to the death of over 20 SCP personnel from repeating itself. The function of these extra personnel is to keep the creature busy by maintaining direct eye contact with the subject while the other person does whatever he came in to do. This eye contact must be kept at all times up until everyone has left the cell and the doors are locked shut. SCP-173 is made specifically from concrete and rebar, and it would seem that the subject also contains traces of the Kyrolin brand spray paint. The subject can be described as animate, and it can also be extremely hostile. It moves at lightning speed whenever it is about to kill someone or something, and for some reason, the object remains still or stops moving while in direct line of sight with something else. And this line of sight must not be in any way be broken between SCP-173 and whoever is looking at it, or the consequences could be fatal. Protocols also demand that whoever is tasked with looking at the subject must alert other members of the team before blinking their eyes. Failure to do so could lead to a break in eye contact and an immediate death. The sculpture is also reported to kill its victims either by snapping their necks at the base of the skull or by strangulating the victim. Neither of these methods is a good way to die, which is why in the event of an attack by the creature, the SCP personnel involved are to carry out Class 4 hazardous object containment procedures. However, the full details on how they do it for this particular subject has been kept a secret, even to most high-ranking personnel. But my theory is, once SCP-173 feels the need to attack and kill everyone around it, not even a special containment procedure can stop it, which means no team of SCP personnel has ever survived an attack from the sculpture. And the SCP Foundation are simply covering up these deaths from their employees to make them feel a bit safe if they are assigned to go into the creature's containers. This can also explain why the special containment procedure is kept a secret from its lower class employees. It's just a guess for now, but I am pretty sure those procedures don't exist. At least not for SCP-173. Personnel also report some weird sounds which seem like the scraping of stones coming from within the container of the subject, and these sounds occur when no one was inside the container of the creature. And this strange sound has been going on for a while, enough for the Foundation to consider consider it a normal behavior, and if at all there is a change in the pattern of sound created, the case must be reported immediately to the acting HMCL supervisor on duty for that day. SCP personnel who successfully went in and out of the container also reported some strange reddish brown substances on the floor. And this substance was later reported to be a combination of both feces and blood, which conflicts with the nature of the subject. From what we can tell, SCP SCP-173 has no excretory organs, so no one knows the true origin of this substance. However, orders were given to make sure the enclosure is cleaned once every two weeks. Another interesting part of this subject is the fact that despite it being the first SCP subject ever captured by the Foundation, it is still regarded as a 173rd SCP subject. No explanation has been given by the Foundation as to why this is the case, but I'm going to guess that it has something to do with their lack of understanding of the creature, even after years of captivity. By the way, just an extra knowledge, the second SCP subject the Foundation caught was 883. 
even though most people thought it was 682. Speaking of 682, it is worth knowing that the Foundation also carried out an experiment between both SCP-683 and SCP-173, and the results were unsettling. From this experiment, it would seem that despite belonging to this Euclid class, SCP-173 was capable of making 682 very unsettled about itself. This alone is strange because 682 has been long considered one of the most powerful and dangerous entities in the multiverse. So. How exactly was it intimidated by 173? Well, records show that while the pair were in the room, SCP-682 began growing several eyes around it in order to never break contact from the sculpture. This means 682 felt threatened by 173, and it is safe to assume that 173 could actually kill 682 if it did break eye contact. Another experiment on SCP-173 was carried out on September 14th, 2010, which also involved an SCP subject known as SCP-187, who is basically a girl that can see the future of any person or object she looks at. She was also used by the Foundation to prevent some deaths and catastrophes within the Foundation. However, the moment she saw SCP-173, not even the SCP Foundation wanted the results of this experiment released. The datas were all encrypted and locked up, but thanks to my informant, I was able to get a hold of the data and bypass the encryption protocol used. The data reveals that SCP-187 got so scared of what she saw in 173 that she screamed for almost an hour before slipping into a coma-like state for about 48 hours before she woke up with no memories of what she saw in the subject. This experiment clearly implies that SCP-173 might actually be more dangerous than anyone had originally imagined. But it did raise a few questions though. The first question is, what exactly did she see in 173? Because the fact that she screamed in fear means that she must have seen a future in the creature. So what was it? The second question is why did SCP-173 not kill her after she broke contact with its eyes? Did the creature use her to show the Foundation just how deadly it was, or was it just being merciful to another SCP subject? The final question is, why did she lose all memories of what she saw in SCP-173? I may be able to answer these questions, however, I can't be certain as to how correct my answers are. First off, SCP-187 probably didn't see anything when she looked at the creature, and this must have come as a shock to her either because she thought she had gone blind or simply because the creature's future is so dark that nothing can penetrate it not even light. As for the second question, she probably didn't make eye contact with the creature because she merely needs to see an object or person to know its future. So basically, all she needed to look at was part of SCP's 173's body and she can see its future. As we already know, the creature only kills things that breaks direct eye contact with it while they are in the same room. So basically, there was no direct eye contact between the two SCP subjects. And to answer the final question, well, if she didn't see anything, she should have at least remembered not seeing anything. Well, we can say she probably lied to the Foundation by claiming she didn't remember in order to hide her shame from her inability to see SCP-173's future. Again, these answers are all hypotheses, but they could be very close to the actual answers of those questions. Since then, the SCP Foundation has performed quite a number of experiments on the sculpture, one of which included the use of yet another SCP subject on July 2012. This time, it was SCP-978, a camera that takes a picture of someone and from the photograph taken. The greatest desires of such an individual would be revealed. However, when they used the camera on 173, the picture came out empty, which implies that the creature is not alive or the creature has no desire. Although a similar test of this nature was conducted before with SCP-187, this particular test could confirm my earlier hypotheses that all the girl saw was darkness because not having a desire also implies not having a future. It is either that or the power of SCP-173 far exceeds any future or desire that both 187 and 978 are capable of seeing. I would like to get an up-close look at the subject and draw my theories from whatever I see, but single-handedly conducting such an experiment could lead to the SCP Foundation discovering my identity 
or worse, my death at the hands of 173. Such a study could be worth it, but for now, I'll just let the SCP Foundation do the work for me. You can also assist me in finding the true mysteries within SCP-173. Where did it come from? Is it the most powerful SCP subject in the world? Will the SCP Foundation find out my true identity? Leave your answers in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you want to follow me on my journey to reveal all the SCP subjects the Foundation has hidden from us. Till then, my friends, have a good day.